Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. Last time I talked to you about living hope from 1 Peter chapter 1. And uh, I'd like to go a little bit later in the passage, uh, that same chapter today, and talk about um, hope again. So Peter talks about living hope in verse 3. And then in verse uh, 13, he talks about um, us hoping completely or perfectly. Um, he goes into verb form and he says that because we've got this living hope, we need to, as it were, have a posture of expectancy, a perfect hoping in the coming of grace that's going to be revealed in Jesus. So this is what it says, verses 13, 14 and 15. So think clearly and exercise self-control. Literally, it's uh, so gird up the loins of your mind. Uh, be ready for action, be on the ball, be self-controlled and sober. And then he says this, look forward to the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better back then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. That's a great passage and it got me thinking really. Um, what's translated here as look forward um, to the gracious salvation that will come to you through Jesus when he's revealed is actually um, this, this thing of completely hope. Or, or be completely hoping, uh, be perfectly hoping in the grace that's coming to you. And it struck me because so often my hoping in Jesus and the grace that comes through him is incomplete because I've divvied up my hope and I've allotted some of it to worldly kind of endeavours. You know, I have certain drives and passions that, you know, I'm going to be X or I'm going to achieve Y or this is going to happen. And those worldly hopes kind of crowd out um, the, the the hope that I have in Jesus. And Peter here says that actually all your hope needs to be given over and housed or nested in the grace that's coming. That's what you need to be living towards with a great expectancy. Your hope needs to be holy. And he talks about holiness a little bit uh, at the end of that, those verses I read you, where it talks about um, being holy. You must be holy because I am holy, God says. And so our hope needs to be holy. It needs to be set apart. In the, in the days of the temple, um, if you had a gold utensil that had been set apart for holy use in the temple, it would have been unthinkable to then take that bowl and use it for your kitchen jobs or something and putting in your carrot tops or whatever, because it had been set apart for holy use. It's the same with our hope. We need to orient our hope so that it is entirely and perfectly uh, pointing towards the grace uh, that's going to be revealed in Jesus. And that's a hard thing to do. And I know that so often I've got all of these desires and, and passions and drives that are based more in my insecurities and worldly desires and, and my kind of jealousy of others that, uh, that they kind of crowd out this, uh, the hope, uh, which, is a, which should be the, the primary, the, the holy driver of our, of our living. And uh, Peter talks here about children. He says, live as obedient children, not as those who are shaped by or conformed to um, their passions as they were at first. He says, no, be obedient. Um, so this week, join me in doing a bit of an inventory of, of your hope. How is your hope allotted? How is it apportioned? Is it all pointing towards Jesus or is it actually firing off in other directions? Let's see if we can realign ourselves and hope perfectly in the grace that is revealed in Jesus.